five cross section of solids. So we get further and further into the book. Some of these lessons are shorter. There's fewer notes, fewer theorems, fewer postulates. Right, we're past kind of all the the really big heavy stuff, and we're kind of in the minutia, if you will, of kind of the finer points of some things. Uh, in this lesson, really, I only have two slides. Uh, the best pictures are going to actually come from the notes page. So when we're talking about cross section of solids, a cross section is the intersection of a three dimensional figure and a plane. Uh, think of a cross section as the shape that would be revealed if you cut straight through an object. So if we took a geometric solid like a cone or a pyramid or a cube or a prism and we sliced it, I mean we might slice it at an angle, we might slice it horizontally, we might slice it vertically, uh, we might slice it down the middle, we might slice off part of the side. What we're talking about, the cross section, is the outline of that figure that we get as a result of cutting it. Okay. Um, I think probably the best example of this, I don't even know if anybody plays this anymore, but have you ever played Fruit Ninja? How many of you have ever at least know what I'm talking about, right? A fair portion of you, okay? So I'm not telling you to go download Fruit Ninja right now or something like that. But uh, even, I think even on the Wii, uh, if you ever played like, like Wii Sports Resort or something, there was like you know, all this different stuff that you could cut. And, and so what you would be talking about is the actual cross-section of what it, that part that had been cut out actually looked like. Okay? All right, so in our next slide, uh, we have what is called uh, Cavalieri's principle, uh, which means if two solids lying between parallel planes have equal heights and all cross-sections at equal distances from their bases have equal areas, then the solids have the same volume. Example, uh, what you see here on page, uh, page 555, is if I have an oblique, uh, an oblique cone, for instance, and a right circular cone, um, because they have the same radius on their base and because they have the same altitude uh, lying perpendicular from their base to the opposite vertex, they're going to have the same volume. Okay, so even though they're not oriented exactly the same way, imagine this, you know, if you had a, uh, you've ever seen a road cone, right? You know, MoDOT puts out a road cone. You ever seen one that's been hit by a car, right? And it's all kind of cockeyed over here, right? Does it have the same volume whether or not it's standing straight up? You could answer that question. Okay, Eric is nodding yes. Okay, fundamentally the 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 orientation of it has changed, but it still has all the same dimensions. They just don't look exactly the same. All right, so let's go from here into some of our, here we go. All right, so our first question, and these won't take very long, we'll get you right into the homework. It says, which is a sketch of the cross section of a square pyramid that is cut parallel to its base Describe the cross section. All right, well, first off, let's start with the three dimensional figure, right? Um, which of these is a square pyramid? A and D, all right? Which of them has a plane that is running parallel to the base? A or D? D. Now, what we're talking about is when that plane cuts it, what is the shape left over? What's the cross section? It's a square, right? Because it was a square pyramid, right? So it's going to be, so long as I'm cutting parallel to the base, it's going to be consecutive smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller in squares as I get closer and closer and closer to the vertex of that pyramid. Does that make sense? Okay. But it has to be parallel because if I cut it, uh, if it came through here and cut it at an angle, okay, where I'm looking at something like, this, right? What I'm, I'm not going to get a square, I'm going to get a rectangle instead. Okay? So it has to be cut parallel to the base. Right? Uh, if we looked at this one, right? This one's cutting it down the middle, right? Perpendicular to the base. We can see where the cross section is a triangle. Right? Right? You look over here, and this is absolutely accurate. I can take a square, and if I'm cutting it at an angle across, my cross section is not a square, it's a rectangle. Right? If I take a square and I cut it parallel to its base, what I'm getting is a square cross section. 
Okay, so even though D is our answer, we do learn something by looking at A, B, and C. All right, because our question very easily could have been, you know, what is the cross section of a square cut parallel, right? Okay. I'm hoping that this is fairly no duh information, but you never know what's, you know, we're talking about visual prospects here, so sometimes it clicks and sometimes it doesn't. All right. Uh, Audrey, what would we sh say the shape of the cross section of this cylinder cut parallel to its base would be? What is the cross section? It's a circle, right? So we're not talking about what is the shape of the plane that cuts it. We're talking about what is the shape that is made by cutting the cross section, which in this case, because it's a cylinder, which means as a circular base and I'm cutting it parallel to its base, it's going to be, should be a circle. Okay. Now, if we had cut it at an angle, right, if we had cut it something like that, it wouldn't be a circle. What would it be? An oval, right? If I had cut through that cylinder at an angle, my cross section, whenever I look at it, is not going to have a radius that's equal all the way around, right? Because from that center, it's going to be further out to here and here than it is even there, which is going to create an oval, okay? So I'm trying to give you, you know, not just um, the obvious answer, but when we look at more complicated questions where it's not so easy to figure out. All right, let's look at number two. Or sorry, number three. Okay. In the diagram below, if the plane is perpendicular uh, to the pyramid's altitude, uh, what figure is the cross section? Well, if it's perpendicular to the altitude, it means it's parallel to what? The base, right? So this kind of uh, reckons back or harkens back to question number one, which means what's the cross section uh, that we're left after that plane cuts it? It's a square, right? Because, it, well, at least it should be. Now, do we know uh, do we know the shape of the base of this pyramid? Do we know it's a square? Uh, let's see. It just says, now, I would disagree with this answer from one respect. If this had said it's a square pyramid, then we could say the cross-section is a square. But because I don't know that, um, I could be a little less specific and say that the cross-section is going to be a rectangle, right? Okay or a parallelogram or something less specific. All right, let's look at number four. If I can rotate this down. Uh, if the plane shown below is perpendicular to the altitude, again, just like what we saw in question number three, uh, altitude of the cylinder, what is the perimeter of the cross section? Is the perimeter of the cross section going to be the same as the perimeter of the base? Yes or no? Matt says yes. Casey says yes. All right. How do I find the perimeter of the base if it's a cylinder? What shape is the base? Circle. Uh, what's another term for the perimeter of a circle? We have a specific term for the perimeter of a circle. What, Caleb, you said it. What is it? Circumference. Do I know how to find the circumference to a circle? What is that? Minor? Okay. We should know two equations, one for circumference, one for area, and the two are very close uh, in the symbols that they use, but they are different. I'll let Minor find it. Okay, nothing else. You can find it in your textbook in the glossary. I got a couple people looking for it. Okay, Mariah, you found it? Yeah, what's the distance around the circle? Mar or uh, minor, if you find it, let me know. Two pi r. Two pi r. Two pi r is correct. All right. Uh, there are there are complicated formulas that I would say you know write down and keep someplace easy to find, and there are formulas that I would say that you need to memorize. This is one that you need to memorize. Okay. Uh, the perimeter or circumference of a circle is two pi r. 
Uh, Aaron, how am I going to put this information into this question in order to find the perimeter of the cross section? 2 pi times 4. Uh, this is all multiplication, correct? All right, is multiplication commutative? Can I move things around inside multiplication? Okay, so what, do, what would I multiply first? 2 and 4, right? And that would give me uh, 8 pi. Okay, now I have two options. I could use 3.14 uh, or I could use the pi symbol. Uh, you guys have calculators. Uh, tell me what you get. 25.12. Okay, and was that with 3.14 or with the symbol pi? Okay, so 25 times 3.14. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, 8 times. 8 times 3.14 came out to 25.12. And this is meters squared. Did anybody use the pi symbol? What did you get differently uh, with 8 pi? 25.13. So not a huge difference. And it didn't say which to use, so I would accept either of those two answers. right? If you would plug this into a test, right, and somebody wrote 25.12, somebody else typed in 25.13, I would accept either of those. Okay? Now, if I'm giving you that question on a test, I might say use the symbol pi or use 3.14 for pi uh, to kind of help you out there a little bit. Uh, let's see. Six, uh, describe the cross section of the solid. Let's assume um, that the plane that's cutting it is parallel to its base. Mick, what is the shape uh, of that cross section? It is a hexagon because it has how many sides? Six sides, right? And it would be a hexagon even if it wasn't cut parallel. It would still be a hexagon. It just wouldn't be a regular hexagon. And we're not necessarily sure that this is a regular hexagon to begin with. Okay? So all this seemed pretty easy so far. Hopefully not too bad. Uh, let's see if we have any more. It doesn't look like we do. So that is really the end of the notes that I have for you. Okay? So it's mainly visual. Uh, but you could see where there was some, uh, some math that we can do. Um, good examples to look at if you get into some tough places are in example number four. Um, you'll get a question like E, uh, but I don't know, let's see, I, probably E wasn't even assigned in that. So uh, let's see, you're in 85, right? So you're starting off with three through nine. You may not even have anything uh, like that to work on. Let's hit stop on this.